Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is Daryl Guberman, CEO of Guberman PMC LLC, a quality consulting firm here in Connecticut. You'll find all the rest of the data down below in featured articles and also videos. But today, this video is about Department of Justice must bring to task ANSI ANAB, the American National Standards Institute and the American National Crediting Board, who are underwriters for the International Accreditation Forum uh, incorporated in Delaware, which is a, a national and international uh, repository for accreditation bodies, and also their sister organization in Australia, the International Laboratory Accreditation Cooperation. Also, in concert with them taking them to task, they should take Mr. Jim McCreevy over here, uh, CEO, uh, former C CEO who brought the 737 MAX on board, also Dennis Mullenberg, and also David Calhoun. They should be questioned and inquisitioned as well. Uh, ANSI ANAB, as I said, are underwriters, so they take all legal responsibility for both systematic and product failure. Let's continue on. <clears throat> on in April of 2017, I was down uh, at the Senate subcommittee meeting uh, held by the Department of Homeland Security with Sam Salipour, who was a whistleblower for the Boeing 777-787. I have corroborating data that basically matches and models him, and it's even worse than what uh, Sam brought to the forefront. It's about giving up supplier um, uh, inspection for a piece of paper, yes, for over 22 years. It's about special processes being given up to a piece of paper, uh, and that's what Boeing was accepting. So when you're sitting on an aircraft with 22 years of basic neglect, you don't know whether your supplier is actually subcontracting that aerospace critical part to a company in China, in Taiwan, India, etc. So we have ANSI. The American National Standards Institute is a private, not for profit, non governmental corporation, been around for 100 plus years, and has federal agencies and corporations on board. <clears throat> ANSI ANAB. ANSI took over complete control over ANAB. The American National Standards Institute took care of, uh, took over the American National Crediting Board. And at the time that they were sitting there, between 2015 and 21, they were controlled and manipulated by a communist Chinese national who was involved with our quality since 1994. I've showed you that in other videos. I'm not going to go into it in this video. But mind you, for all that time, for between 2015 and 2021, that they had federal agencies on ANSI's board, they had corporations on ANSI's board, and most of them got hacked. Now we go to this. The Department of Justice is bringing uh, Boeing up on charges because they violated deferred uh, prosecution agreement uh, between 2018 and 19 for the Ethiopian and Indonesian aircraft that crashed. The problem is, is that they too sit on ANSI's board right over by Boeing. You have, uh, we have a special guest here, Merrick Garland, who came in from Washington. Thank you, Merrick, for coming in. We appreciate that. You have over 10 different registrars in communist China that can issue an ANSI ANAB accredited certification. So for those people who are ANSI ANAB accredited over in the US, shame on you. You have the factor that <clears throat> ANSI is the founder of the International Accreditation Forum. No wonder why they're underwriters. In fact, at the time, uh, Mr. Randy Dory was the vice president of ANAB, the chairman and principal on the IF tax report. He handled the whole ball of wax. He basically said within the context of this article that both the IAF and ILAC are sister organizations. Randy also went on to go state that an IAF MRA, which is a multi-regional agreement, and an MLA, a multilateral agreement, are equivalent in accreditation to ANAP. So if you have the China National Accreditation Services certifying the laboratory in Wuhan, China, which they did, and that virus escaped and those people are trying to sue this one, that one, you have to go directly to ANSI ANAP, just like Boeing. Boeing's quality is demanded and mandated by uh, their supplier portal, their supplier bulletin. Uh, and uh, that it must be ANSI, ANAB, or internationally equivalent. Unbelievable. We have an actual federal contract from 2018 when China was watching over the IAF that demands IAF and ANSI, ANAB as the accreditation body. Uh, this also shows you that, yes, they are an underwriter, an underwriter for uh, the IAF. Now we come on to Boeing. Boeing's a good one. Boeing, remember the DOJ sits right over by Boeing on ANSI's board. You have Boeing sitting on uh, ANSI's board. Uh, also, you have seven different registrars. And if you look at it, we pulled some certificates here. This is for <clears throat> Spirit Aerospace Systems. They are Intertech certified uh, or accredited by ANSI, ANAB. Also, you have the IF on board. You find Intertech on here as well. 
one of seven registrars that sit right over by Boeing. You also have Boeing sitting there uh, with uh, using a TUV SUD, which also sits, and you'll be able to see that right there, TUV SUD. They sit uh, right over by their registrar, right over by the accreditation body that they mandate. So there is no confidence in the integrity of quality that these certifications are issued with. You also have the factor on their supplier portal calling out uh, ANSI, ANAP, or internationally equivalent. You have the factor, here you all go. They also sit on ANAP's board that can grant, suspend, and withdraw certification. Boeing does. You have the Federal Aviation Administration, which sits on ANSI's board, right over by Boeing. And in 2009, uh, Boeing was made an FAA regulator, which means that they didn't have to tell anyone about the MCAS system, nor they didn't have to tell them about any sort of designs like Sam Salipore brought to the forefront about the 787 because they are the FAA. So how does one regulator watch over another regulator? <clears throat> you have the factor that um, they also fudge documentation most recently with their uh, V-22, the Bell Boeing Composite Facility, I think in Pennsylvania. Uh, the DOJ fined them $8.1 million for uh, fudging documentation between, I think, 2007 and 2018. For 11 years, they were doing that, ladies and gentlemen. So a uh, leopard never changes its spots. You find confidence in the integrity of quality that ANSI ANAB dispenses with those certifications? Absolutely not. But, you know, as I've been out there... Uh, in the forefront of this whole quality mess for over 40 plus years in business for 13. This is what AS9100, many, many who are certified with that certification from ANSI ANAP, tell me. It's pay to play. Pay to play. You have the factor in 2000, in April of 2002, that this is a requirement from uh, Boeing, you notice that there is no logo on top, but you also see that it is from the supplier portal. That's the exact web site. Uh, and you plug that in and you will find out that they are requiring uh, special processes like prime paint, non-destructive testing, uh, also heat treatment, etc., welding to be certified by NADCAP. You send in your cert to Boeing, they don't have to come visit you. The next item of business is the factor of their supplier bulletin put out in July of 2002, just several months later. This basically states this. If you are, um, if you are AS9100 certified, oh, sorry. If you are AS9100 certified, you, as long as it's ANAB accredited, it's the ANAB accredited, send in your cert, send in your parts, and we don't have to come visit you. And here is this. This is a good one. This is the actual article that states that Boeing was made an FAA regulator in 2009. Do not listen to the news media. I've talked to several news outlets and they do not want this to be publicized. They say, well, Daryl, yeah, they were made a regulator. But listen, they didn't have to talk about MCAS. You read in these many, many articles and major news outlets say that Boeing lied to the FAA. No, they didn't. They didn't have to tell the FAA anything. And I'm going to tell you why. Here it is. Boeing's commercial airplanes division to self-certify its own aircraft. The new system allows Boeing employees to perform tasks on behalf of the FAA that include oversight of testing and product standards, along with certification of aircraft technologies and new aircraft designs. Aircraft technologies would be MCAS. They didn't have to tell. The new aircraft designs is what Sam Salipour brought forward about the 787. You also have the factor here that... Um, <clears throat> FAA appointed in-house company inspectors who report most of the findings to the FAA through Boeing. So most of the uh, discrepancies they're going to, uh, you know, let the FAA know as long as they could tell their management uh, before they tell the FAA. I'm sure that went on. And so what we are having here is that all three of these guys, because this guy's 2009 without a doubt, all three of them are basically FAA administrators. And the last one is, what does IAF stand for? IF stands for It Always Fails. My telephone number is 203-556-1493 or Daryl, TQRS at yahoo.com. I thank you.